What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build these simple DIY floating shelves. So I built these out of some fancier hardwoods. I used babinga on this bottom shelf and soft maple on the top shelf. But if you don't have the machinery required to mill rough lumber, you could build this out of something like a two by eight from your local home center and build these with nothing but a circular saw to cut the boards the length a drill to cut the holes in the back for the floating shelf hardware, as well as cut the holes for the dowels, and then the doweling jig itself, which is only about 20 bucks. So this is a great beginner's woodworking project, and if you build it out of a two by eight, you could paint it or stain it to match the look you're going for. So let's go ahead and get started with the build. So as I said in the intro, if you don't have access to the tools required to mill rough lumber, you could either buy S4S lumber from your local lumber dealer, which means it's already surfaced on all sides, or you could use something like a two by eight from your local home center. So the first step, since I was using rough lumber, was squaring up the wood using my jointer, planer, and table saw. So I started by jointing one edge on the jointer, then cut the shelf pieces to rough length on the miter saw. So the dimensions of the shelf pieces are 18 inches long by six inches wide for the top and bottom pieces and five and a half inches long by six inches wide for the side pieces. So I left the two side pieces of the shelves as one 11 inch piece since they would have been too short to pass through my planer otherwise. So next I flatten one face and one edge on the jointer and this gives me a reference surface for the next steps in squaring up the boards. So with one face flat, I could put that face downwards on the planer and bring the opposing face parallel. And this is one of my favorite parts of woodworking. It's almost like unwrapping the piece of wood since you really don't know what's below the rough surface until this point. And this was my first time working with Babinga and it is just absolutely gorgeous. So I also brought all the boards down to roughly an inch and an eighth thick while at the planer. Next, I squared up the other edge of the boards on the table saw, also ripping the boards to their final width of six inches. And finally, I cut the boards to their final length at the miter saw, squaring up one end before cutting the other end to length. So with the boards cut to size, I could start laying out the joinery. For this build, I used the Rockler half inch dowel drilling jig kit. And so the first step was to mark lines where I wanted to put my dowels. And placement here wasn't super critical, since the shelves won't be supporting a ton of weight, mostly just knickknacks and that kind of thing. And half inch dowels will provide a ton of strength. Next I set the depth on the drill bit that's included with the kit, since I definitely didn't want to drill through the face of the shelves. And with the depth set, I started drilling my dowel holes. So one key when using these jigs is to make sure to clamp the jig tightly so that it doesn't move. And I didn't clamp the jig tightly enough when drilling a few of these holes, and this caused my shelf pieces to be slightly misaligned a little later on. So with the top and bottom boards done, I moved on to drilling holes in the sides. So first I reset my depth again using a dowel for reference, and the process was basically the same as the top and bottom boards, except on the sides I was drilling into the ends of the board. And once again, just make sure to clamp the jig down tightly so it doesn't move. So once all the holes were drilled, it was time for assembly. I added glue to the half inch dowels and then pounded them into the corresponding holes. And make sure not to add too much glue since it'll create too much pressure for the dowel to seat fully. And you can see that I had some trouble with this when I went to put the shelf together since I had added a bunch of glue to the dowel holes, but luckily a little clamping pressure got rid of the gaps. So while I assembled the maple shelf, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Rockler. So I used a ton of Rockler products during this build, including their dowel drilling jig, blind shelf supports, and their ever trusty glue brush. And I'll have links to all the items I used in the video description below. So Rockler has got tons of great tools and accessories for your next build, and they're always coming up with new and innovative ideas to help make your woodworking more efficient and more enjoyable. So thanks again to Rockler for sponsoring this build. After the glue dried, I cleaned up any misalignment in the shelves with a hand plane off camera, since hopefully you won't run into this problem and then added a chamfer to all the edges with a router. So this is obviously an optional step, but it really gives the shelves a nice look. Also, having my wagon vise on my new workbench makes work holding during routing a breeze. Man, I love that thing. So after routing, I squared up the inside corners with a chisel since the router leaves a rounded edge there. Next, I laid out the hole locations for the blind shelf supports. And these supports need to be mounted to studs, so I spaced the holes 16 inches on center. And I also centered the holes along the thickness of the shelves, and then used a center punch to mark the location. 
So to drill the holes, I used my drill press, which is highly recommended if you have access to one. But if not, just make sure to use a square or a drilling guide to keep the hole as square as possible. Next, I sanded both shelves up to 180 grit, making sure to remove any burn marks from the router, and also hand sanded all the chamfers to really smooth them out. For finish, I used Waterlocks, another one of this week's sponsors. And Waterlocks is a blend of tongue oil and resins and creates a really tough water resistant finish that is also absolutely beautiful. The tongue oil penetrates into the wood while the resins remain elastic and this combination holds up to wear extremely well. To learn more about Waterlocks, check out the link in the video description below. And in total, I applied three coats of Waterlocks, letting the finish dry for 24 hours between coats. And finally, it was time to hang the shelves. So I used a stud finder to mark the locations of my studs, and then I mounted one of the blind shelf supports to the stud using two and a half inch screws. So to mark the location of the other shelf support, I put the shelf post itself into the hole in the back of the shelf with the set screw that's included with the shelf hardware installed. Then I leveled the shelf and then put pressure on the shelf to mark the exact location on the wall. So I installed the other shelf support and then did a test fit of the shelf and it looked great. So with the first shelf done, I could mark the location for the top shelf. I made sure my marks were plumbed to the first shelf using a level so that the shelves would line up. And I spaced the upper shelf 10 inches above the lower shelf so that they were arranged in a square. So I installed the shelf hardware for the upper shelf the same way I did for the lower shelf. And with both shelves in place, the project was done. Man, did I say shelf enough times there? All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a nice simple project, but I'm really happy with the look. I actually got inspired to build these from my local eye doctor, believe it or not. They had a whole wall full of shelves that looked like this. And so I'm hoping to kind of expand this shelving over time. Now, this is great if you have like one single board of a certain type of wood that you couldn't really build a whole project out of. Uh, this really doesn't require a ton of wood and the result is beautiful. So if you guys enjoyed this one, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every week. Also, I have a list of all the materials and tools I use down in the video description below. Also, a big shout out to all my supporters over on Patreon. I'll have a list of my $10 patrons here on the screen. If you guys wanna join up, I'll also have a link to Patreon. All right guys, thanks again for watching and until next time, happy building.